Dr. Patel, let's ask the question about toothbrushes, uh, soft brushes, hard brushes, uh, electric brushes, hand brushes. Tell us what's the best. Well, I myself, I'm using an electric brush. So I think the electric brush is much more better and, uh, than the hand brushes. The hand brushes had, had its disadvantages and advantages. It does not apply the force to the tube in the right way. It does not apply the force in the right direction because when you are brushing, you are moving your head or you are moving your, your hand in every other way. In an electric brush, you just follow the directions, 45 degree angle to the tube, and then follow it all the way around. It cleanses it nice and very, very well. Some of the electrical brushes will also uh, create a vibration at the same time, and with that vibration, the plaque attached will come out also at the same time. Electrical brushes are much more better than uh, hand brushes. Okay. And should people have soft brushes or, or, or rather hard brushes? There seems to be lots of controversy out there. Well, we always tell our patients to use soft brushes, the hard brushes, and, and with the wrong habit, it can create an abraded area around the, around the tooth and the gum, or at, the, at, at sometimes it may create a recession of the gums. And once the gums have receded slightly, the next layer of the tooth, which is uh, towards the gum, which is called cementum, is very, very sensitive. And this creates a hell of a lot of uh, problems. Sensitivity is one of the most difficult problems to solve because you do not want to cut the tooth structure at this stage and you want to treat the sensitivity, which is very, very difficult at times. I got it. Now, you said 45 degree angle. So let me ask you. Is it, uh, and, and I really had that question for, for a long time, is it more important to brush the, the white uh, part of the tooth, the email, or the gums, or is it, in, you know, uh, give us some, uh, some hints there of what to pay attention to, actually. Well, the most important part to brush in the whole area is that one millimeter below the gums and one or two millimeter above the gums. These are the places where the plaque is accumulated. On, on the top of the crown, the plaque is very, very self-cleansing. While you eat an apple, it will clean by itself. It is just a matter of habit and ma matter of cleansability of a patient, how clean he wants to be. While you have got taken extra care with that 45 degree angle tilt to your brush and reach that area below the gum, that one millimeter below the gum, the, the, the white part of the, the tooth, which is called the crown, will be clean by itself. But if you just concentrate on the crown and do not go near the gums, then you are creating a gum disease in the long run. So we don't want to do that. Wonderful. Now let's go a little bit into flossing since we're on this whole thing. thing. Is there any difference? Uh, number one, where should they pay attention with flossing? Uh, is it is it is it is it uh, you know upwards massaging the gums or is it sidewards the tooth? And is there any difference between the thick floss, the small floss, the uh, plastic covered floss, uh, or the, the not so? Uh, it, 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 any any anything to it? Yeah, by plastic cover, I, I, I understand you mean the waxed floss. Yeah, the waxed floss are easy to glide along the tooth. The, the, way, the true way to floss is to hold it first ni nicely between the two of your index fingers. Once you have held it nice and tight around the index fingers with the thumb, you have to glide the, the, the floss slightly between the two contact areas of the tooth. Once you pass the contact area, then you glide the floss around one tooth and then bring it again to the contact area and glide it around the other tooth up to the sulcus. That is the true way of flossing it. Not just getting and getting in and out with the floss. You have to floss very, very nicely. Nice, tight grip. And then gliding it nicely with your thumb motion. There are electrical flosses. I do not like them. I do not think they are justifying uh, the true way of doing it. There are flosses with some hooks available in the supermarket. They do not do because you can't hold it nice and tight with your finger. 
the, 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 fall, the, the fall should not be loose, the string should not be loose. It should be stretched to its maximum to glide nice and good at the contact area and then around one tooth and then come and glide and clean the other tooth. Now, That's the now two way qu question personally, like, I, I know that if for whatever reason, and I know I shouldn't do that, especially not talking to a dentist, I shouldn't even admit it, but if I don't floss for two to three days and, and I floss again, I will actually have a little bit of bleeding there. And then usually the next day when I floss again, uh, the bleeding is gone again. Sh should I be concerned? No, you should not be concerned. There are, there, are, there are two things you should be concerned about. One, that you, when you glide the, two, uh, the floss around the tooth, you should be careful that you are not damaging it directly by going right to the gum in a forceful manner. You should come near the gum and then and then squeeze the, the just like you are squeezing a cotton just around it and just just glide it around that. You should not be forcing in that area. Initially because of the plaque accumulation the gums may be inflamed and that may have created some bleeding but eventually by the next day you say you feel good that means you are doing the right thing. Wonderful. Now one more thing. Um, I know you're from India, and I have lived in India for a while, and I see, I've seen you people there using a gum uh, scratcher. Um, uh, it, it, you know, should we clean our gums? Is the brush okay to do so, or do we need one of those, uh, you know, scraping uh, things uh, the way in the your tongue country? Clear, the the tongue, tongue scraper, yes. The tongue scraper, I've been using it since I'm 60 years old, so probably right from age 5 I may have been using it. So for 55 years of my life I've used it. And I can go without brushing, I may go without brushing if uh, there is no brush, but I cannot go without the tongue scraper. Because all the plaques on the tongue is really scraped by the tongue scraper. You feel a freshness in your breath. You feel all the difference with the tongue scraper. Without the tongue scraper it's just like you haven't, you haven't had your shower, you know. Tongue scraper is just like having your shower in the mouth. So, can people, should people, is it a poor substitute or is it no substitute at all to use the brush and brush the, uh, the, the tongue? Or, or is a scraper? There is no substitute. There is no substitute. Brushing the tongue with your brush does not clean it as good as a tongue scraper. Listerine or other mouthwashes which are available may not clean it as much. It does not physically remove the plaque from your tongue. It may, it may fill you mouth, mouth uh, washes and all that may fill you fresh, but it will not remove the, the physical plaque which has gone between the taste buds. And those are the ones from the crevice you, the tongue scraper will take it out. Interesting. And where can uh, people get one? Because it's not necessarily uh, sold and promoted the way toothbrushes are promoted. Uh, where, where should people go for it? Is there something they should look for? Well, many dental offices carry it. Our dental office uh, do carry it from time to time. But <coughs> And once we recommend to the patient, they will buy the tongue scrapers. And uh, they are very, very handy. So can dental office is the that, main uh, place. You may find it on the internet, but dental office would be the first place to see. Dental office and the internet. Got it. Well, thanks, Dr. Patel. Uh, very informative, like always. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.